I'm taking kind of a me day today. I was really tired, <laughs> so I slept half of the morning and feeling better, but I don't want to burn out. So uh, I'm going to the grocery store. I got to get groceries. I got to clean. I got to get some exercise. So I'll probably take you with me on a walk later. But yeah, like that's my day and I might have a bath and just chill, maybe watch Netflix and such because I feel a little like I've neglected myself and I have been actively balancing my, my days and my life because I spent, you know, like <laughs> since 2017, it's been hardcore truth stuff and sometimes it gets a little overwhelming and it gets to you it's like too much all at once and so I have to take some days off sometimes not think about truth related stuff get back to me get centered and just enjoy things for a while even though it's 3d stuff still here in the 3d still living it still have to deal with it so I have to enjoy it and I know a lot of people are still in the spot where they hate it here and I could totally relate I was there for a while yeah quite a while too long <laughs> but once you once you get to a higher perspective and you can see you have rule of your domain it's not so bad. It's kind of fun. So have faith that on the other side, there's something really good. Keep watching Law of Assumption videos and practicing that. There really isn't any reason to hate it here. Basically, you're just going through something and so it's going to take some time. But, um, yeah, so like I've had a long stretch where I was just making videos and I, I had put that as top priority and a little, little while ago I put myself as top priority and um, you have to do the same you have to make yourself top priority so there were times where I had to confront I had to confront that I had this sort of need to do things for other people at my own expense um, and it was kind of, I was kind of aware of it, kind of not aware of it. You know, you kind of feel like you're helping people. You kind of feel like you're contributing or you're thoughtful or considerate or, um, you know, that's part of society, right? But at the same time, uh, I wasn't tending to myself enough. I wasn't looking after my own needs. I wasn't asking for what I wanted. And uh, a lot of that stems from things that I picked up when I was little, that I learned, that I felt that that's how you have to be. And um, some people call that people pleasing, but it's I think it's more complex than that. But anyhow, uh, it's a process. It's not, you know, there's been times where I've I've let go of a lot of things that I did thinking that I had to do them and realized I didn't have to do them. Realized I didn't have to accept a lot of things that I thought I had to accept and set them free and freed up a lot of my time because a lot of that went to helping other people who didn't even want my help, didn't appreciate it. And so I took all that time back and I decided I wasn't going to do that anymore. If somebody wanted my help, I would help. But if I find myself in a position where I'm overextending myself or I'm helping where someone hasn't asked, I pull back. And that was huge, huge change for me. And um, so I've been focusing more on myself and filling myself up and not concerning myself so much with the out there and um, you know giving when I can but this idea that we need to 
be in service to others or give all the time and not expect anything in return is bullshit. Um, it's unhealthy and it's it's self-serving to the person who expects it of you. So you have to tend to yourself first, your own well-being, and that means well-being in a wide variety of ways. Your physical well-being, so your health, your fitness, um, your mental well-being, your spiritual well-being, balance, like psychological balance, social well-being, all of those things are required so that you feel that you're taking care of yourself. And, you know, I probably should talk about self-love at some point because there's a lot of misconceptions of what it is and a lot of, because a lot of the advice that comes out of these magazines and articles and psychology and all that stuff is all coming outside in. So they don't have it right. It has to come from inside out. It was interesting when I realized that these magazines don't know anything. <laughs> they, 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 they provide stupid advice, like relationship advice that doesn't work. It's stupid advice. It's all about the woman catering to the man, the woman being concerned with sexuality, concerned with pleasing a man in every aspect. And it's just garbage. So when I realized that, I was like, wow, this is, this is messed up. Why do we buy into this crap? And it's the same for self-care and self-love. They're basically telling us that we need to, you know, buy all sorts of crap. We need to have, you know, go and treat yourself to a spa day. Go and treat yourself to, you know, read a book. Go and do this. Do and do this. No, just do what you love. Do what fills you up. Do what makes you feel good. Tend to your needs. I don't think I've ever seen an article that says that. I've seen self-love comes with looking after yourself, like get a facial, go to a spa, get a massage, read a book. Stupid, stupid, hollow, outside in advice. If you wanna fill you up, you wanna have some self-care, you gotta check with yourself, figure out what you need. What's, what's making me feel down? What's making me feel empty? What's making me feel like I need something from the external. So there's something that I'm either neglecting or I'm giving too much or I haven't filled up, I haven't been attentive to that needs servicing and then do that. So for me today, <laughs> I need to get food because I want to have a nice meal. I also need to exercise. I also need to clean and I can't leave this any longer. It's gone on too long and and I needed to sleep so I have to tend to those needs take care of myself and not overextend myself and not burn out because if I burn out then you don't get any more videos <laughs> all right I am off to the grocery store see you later yeah it's chilly today so I'm not gonna go for a walk it's got an undercurrent of iciness and it looks like snow is coming it's sunny though which I appreciate, but filming while walking when it's icy, no, not good. So I think I'm gonna clean instead and uh, relax and watch some Netflix, talk to you guys for a bit and call it a day. I just put on a video by Minutes of Horror who's kind of in the conspiracy camp. I haven't watched very much, but it's about the movie Leave the World Behind. I can already tell you that it's about leaving the physical behind because that's what everything's about. But I think I'll watch it. Anyway, he's, he's talking about how Obamas are involved and so it's got to be some kind of conspiracy stuff. <laughs> I'm interested in hearing what he has to say about it. You know... Um, I had a comment today about um, birthdays and if we 
spend a lot of focus on celebrating birthdays, the opposite has to be true. Well, what I learned when I was going through this truth stuff is the opposite being true is not true because the opposite, this is like what I mean by every conspiracy is a red herring and a clue. So the red herring is in um, believing that it's true. So if birthdays are uh, celebrated in the physical, so that's solar pillar, then the opposite has to be true would be lunar pillar. So you want to find the middle. Either it is something that is in the middle, so read between the lines, or it's a merging of the two. Because in actual fact, birthdays are highly significant because it celebrates your energy signature. And your energy signature comes from the stars. It's your star map, it's your star story. You are unique to that time, place, and day. Nobody else has your precise map. So this is why it is highly significant, but they don't tell you why. We don't know why. But when we celebrate our birthdays in the physical, we celebrate it in kind of toxic ways. You know, we indulge in buying gifts. We indulge in buying um, food, junk food, getting drunk, you know, doing crazy stuff, kind of on the physical toxic side. That's not the way to celebrate your birthday. You should be... <laughs> You should be celebrating it and understanding that you are the God that you are and it's a divine holy day. I don't mean that you should be like, everybody needs to bow down to me. I mean, taking care of yourself, putting an emphasis on being good to yourself, exercise, you know, do nice things for yourself, pamper yourself, do things that you enjoy, be in good company and meditate and all of that sort of thing being mindful and treating yourself to things that you find pleasure in and that you enjoy and surround yourself with people who love you and care about you and want to celebrate you and what you have to bring to the world. Do we celebrate that way? Hell no. No, we don't. Basically, it's, hey, I'm going out for drinks. Do you want to come? And, you know, everybody kind of does their own thing. It's, it's not like that. So... I mean, you can celebrate it any, any way you like. It's just a suggestion. But it's in more of a positive, uh, spiritual sense. So anyhow, I just did some yoga and a little bit of workout. And so now I'm going to run a bath and possibly watch this film. So if I'm watching this film, I'm probably going to have my opinion on it. Should be interesting. Okay. <laughs> started playing this movie. I don't know what to make of it so far. I only just started. And these this couple are like, oh, this is our house. It's a blackout. Can we stay here? I'm <laughs> like, kind of weird. But now all I care about is, can you get to the point and tell us whether this couple actually owns the house or not? Because it's so distracting from everything else. And there's some interesting code stuff in here like they talk to the camera um they make a lot of references to being in a tv show and um <clears throat> and the world falling apart like the ships coming into the shore when they're not supposed to it, it, it's kind of interesting so far but kind of weird and i'm sure it's gonna get weirder but what i find fascinating is that it's come out right now so it's kind of telling what's going on right now that the system's falling apart. Okay, I have to say that was a weird movie full of some symbolism and cryptic messages, end of the world stuff. But like I mentioned in uh, my previous video, at the very end, the daughter of the white couple runs away, finds a bunker in a, an empty house, and it's full of DVDs, and she's been wanting to watch the last episode of Friends. 
which I find incredibly odd timing how, okay, <laughs> this movie just came out on Netflix. It's dated 2023. And this girl is obsessed with friends, which is way before her time. And so she wants to watch the last episode of Friends because she wants to know what happens. And there's a power outage, so loss of connection again. And there's a couple of references to um, them being in a TV show, which was kind of odd. They even talked to the camera a couple of times at the beginning. So they're basically telling us that Earth, like Earth isn't what you think it is, life isn't what you think it is, hinting at the end of the world and that weird things are happening. And they say that it's, you know, like war or whatever. So this girl's in the bunker and she finds her uh, DVD of Friends. And this girl's really young. She's like, I guess 10 or something. So I doubt very much she even knows how to use a DVD player. But anyway, she finds finds the last episode, puts it in the DVD player, and presses play. And the, the name of the last episode is the last one. So perhaps it's a hint to say that she's the last one in the world because uh, the world is about to go to war. And so she's the only one who's in the bunker, so she's okay. But she puts friends on, and, and one of the other, one of the other um, characters said that friends is, she used to like it, but then it's kind of like being nostalgic for a time that never was. Which is interesting, I mean, the 90s, I used to watch Friends in the 90s and I used to like it and I used to resonate with it because these 20-somethings were kind of lost, didn't know what they wanted to do, but I mean, it was kind of around the same age and I didn't really know what to do. <laughs> it was all about Gen Xers. I mean, we were Gen Xers, right? So anyhow, she puts that episode on and they don't show the episode, but it was just, it ended on the Friends song, which is, so no one told you life was gonna be this way. And this film comes out, what is it? Mid-December and Matt Perry died at the end of October. I find that very odd, an odd coincidence. There are no coincidences. So the fact that she's obsessed with Friends, they could have picked any, any show, but they picked Friends. And <laughs> yeah, like the song, No One Told You Life Was Gonna Be This Way. Um, she says it makes her happy, it makes her feel happy. And okay, so the way that I see this movie doesn't really have a whole lot to do with actually like, the actual movie. To me, it's a message to say that we're at the end of the story and leave the world behind has to do with leaving the physical behind. And it's not what you think it is. The world isn't what you thought it was. And everything's starting to go haywire because the illusion is falling. The illusion is crumbling and so no one told you life was going to be this way because no one, <laughs> you didn't realize that we were living in an illusion and as people are starting to awaken, the illusion is crumbling. So collectively, all of this, all of these things are starting to go haywire, which is interpreted as being under attack or interpreted as, you know, being in a war. So that's kind of how I see it. I'm not gonna do like a dedicated decode or anything. It's not really worth my while. It's kind of a weird film. I'm sure there's plenty in it that I could pull out of it, but that's really the the main stuff that I see in it that is worth mentioning. Um, plus, I have to edit this video and I gotta take a bath. It's cold in here for some reason and um, I don't wanna sit here editing in the cold. And then I'm gonna make some hot chocolate. <laughs> Have a nice little cozy winter night in. 
Okay, so I'll talk to you later. Bye.